everyone and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Angelica Torres and I am the creator of Love Letters to Milo. So if you guys haven't already been following me on Instagram, you can follow me right here at Love Letters to Milo. And you probably know that I launched my very first book back in December and only until today I have time to do a full review of one of the tutorials in this book. So this book is, you can find it on Amazon, you can find it on Barnes & Noble, Hobby Lobby, Books a Million. All the links are in the description below if you guys want your own copy. So in today's video, we are going to do one of the tutorials in the book. It's going to be a landscape tutorial. The book is mainly focused on a botanicals landscape. It has a chapter for animals, for fruit or food. But the main approach is a very relaxing, meditative approach. If you guys have seen me or been following me on my Instagram for a couple of years, you know that my approach to painting has always been very meditative and very relaxing. So this is the main focus of this book, just 25 projects to just help you kind of find a relaxing our journey, our relaxing space for yourself for five minutes, 10 minutes. So if you guys do get your own copy, I truly, truly, truly appreciate with all my heart that you guys leave a review, leave stars, leave a comment on the website where you purchase the book. It would be truly appreciated. It makes my, just my day when I see new reviews or, you know, comments on my book. So let's jump into the tutorial. And as always, please let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the tutorial, about the process, about the materials, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so let's jump right in. All right, the main materials that we're going to use is Arches Gold Press Paper, Indigo, and a round brush. All right, so now that I'm all set up, I am going to give you guys a tiny little overview of the book and the tutorials that are in the book. And we are going to go and look for the one that we're going to paint, but you guys can see I have animals, I have fruits, I have a chapter for um, landscapes, I have this the beautiful map, something for Christmas, a desert scene, and um, this is the tutorial that we are going to do in five super easy steps. So we're just going to go ahead and start on this uh, ocean night scene that is very calming and it is incredibly easy to do. Um, it's just a matter of following five easy steps. So let's get into it. All right, so the very first thing that I'm going to do is with my clean water and my soft brush, I am going to wet the entire surface of my paper. I am, you guys know and have known me for a while, I do not tape the edges of my paper because I like the rough edges that the brush in itself creates. So I'm just wetting the paper and not worrying too much about the edges or having a perfect edge. Um, then I am just making sure that the entire surface is wet, but not overly wet, not super damp. The paper just needs to be shiny in a way. It just needs to, you need to be able to see the water, but don't let it create uh, puddles basically. So it's just um, a shiny surface. Um, then I, with the indigo and the same brush, I am going to do the edge um, of the paper, the first edge, um, to the, what is this, my left. And just with pure indigo, a high value, so it's, um, it's very intense. And I'm just going to dab it at the, at the left edge. And then I'm going to um, lift the paper and let the paint flow. So that is what the very first step is. Uh, as you can see, I'm not worrying at all about the edge. 
Um, this is a process that it is incredibly relaxing for me in particular is just moving the paper around and watching the paint move is absolutely fascinating for me. So um, as the paint starts moving in the paper, I sometimes kind of gauge like I need more paint or I need more water uh, for the paper to for the paint to um, to flow. But right now I'm trying really hard to just leave a white empty space in the middle. That is going to be our light source. So the white space in the middle is going to be kind of like what the the shining of the moon basically is going to to appear as. So I really love the fact that it's a very kind of random uh, source of light. I'm not attempting to do too much to it. Sometimes I add a little bit more indigo here and there to create more contrast, but I really love to just keep moving the paper around, watching the paint flow and um, just allowing the paint to, to drip basically. Now that I can see that my light source is pretty even or is what I want it to be, I want to add a tiny little bit more contrast uh, to my sky or to my what, what eventually will be my water surface. So I dab a little bit more indigo here and there and let it flow sideways in the exact same technique that I did the first layer. And I'm doing this while the paper is still wet. So I am just adding just a little bit more contrast to uh, give variation to, to my sky or my water layer. Alright, so now that I can see that I am happy with the result of my indigo and my light source, I am just going to let the paint completely dry and I am going to just let it air dry. I don't use any heat elements, so it just dries on its own. So now that it's completely dry, we're going to move on to the mountains layer. This will create the, the element that will break the horizon. So we're gonna keep using the same indigo with a really, really strong like value. So you can mix, you can say, you can mix it like a one to one ratio, like just dip the brush a little bit in water and just have a very intense um, indigo. For this step, I am using a synthetic brush, but you can keep using the same brush you were using. Just a synthetic brush gives you a little bit more definition or a little bit more control on the edges that you're trying to create. So I'm just using a very high value indigo. All right, so with my synthetic brush, I am doing kind of a wiggly line to get my mountain shape, uh, general shape ready. And I'm going to then use that shape and do kind of a very horizontal uh, bottom to it so I can break my sky between my sky and my ocean uh, surface. So I want this to be very dark. I don't want it to be muted. So I'm just adding a lot of indigo and I'm just creating uh, basically my horizon line.
Now, I also like to sometimes put an element all the way in the foreground um, just to give it a little bit more depth. And uh, that way we have like foreground elements, mid-ground elements, the background elements, and that makes the, com the composition like a lot more interesting. And it's just kind of a little doodle mountain that I'm doing right now. All right, so now that I have my mountains ready, I am ready for this step four, which is to do the texture of the water. So this is just a very uh, simple, very soft brush strokes in the water surface with the same indigo, but very watered down. You want a very, very soft indigo. So just add a lot of water to the indigo that you currently have and just do little well, ripples, I would say. Um, in the tutorial in the book, I am using the soft brush, but you can also use the synthetic. It really doesn't quite make a difference for this step. Is The soft one might give you a little bit of uh, more, less control, so they look more natural. This one, because it's a little stiffer, um, the ripples might look more linear. I would say so it doesn't really matter it's just up to you guys which brush you want to use and it's basically just um, creating the ripples of the ocean with a very light indigo All right, so now that we have the surface of the water done, I am going to use, you can use gouache, you can use acrylic. I am using a poster color, um, which for all intents and purposes, it's fine. And I am just watering it down to create the splash of the night sky, like to create the stars. So I'm just watering it down, just make sure you have a very soft, white and we'll create the sparkles that will be the stars.
All right, so that is all we have done all five steps. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to leave me a review of the book on the website that you purchased it. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram for more tutorials on a daily basis. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.